Welcome to Electra Online. Let's do a few more examples using the Dirac Delta function in three dimensions to become more familiar with it. Here we have an integral. The function is defined right here and the delta function is r minus c and the volume over which we're going to integrate is defined as a sphere with radius equal to 6 centered at the origin and the value or the, uh, the c vector is defined as 5x plus 3y plus 2z. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the delta function resides within the volume of integration. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the r minus c vector and the magnitude of that. So the magnitude squared, because it's easier to just take the magnitude squared, we're going to take the magnitude squared of r minus c, r minus c, we're going to square that. And so this is equal to, uh, that would be um, 0 minus, so for the, for the x vector that would be 0 minus 5, and like this square, plus 0 minus 3, square plus 0 minus 2. So here we have r at the origin and c is defined here. So we take the distance in the x direction, the y direction, the z direction. We square each of the distances that will be equal to the total distance squared. And so they will be equal to 5 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared which is equal to 25 plus 9 plus 4 which is 38. Now, if we take the sphere over which we're going to integrate, we have the rate is equal to 6. If we square that, so we have r is equal to 6. Since we found the square of the, diff of the distance from the r vector at the origin to where the c vector is pointing to, we get a magnitude of 38, but that's the magnitude squared. And if we take r squared, this is r squared equals to 36. We realize that 38 is larger than 36, which means that the delta function does not reside inside the volume over which we integrate, and therefore it's zero everywhere, which means that this integral is simply equal to zero. Don't have to do anything else. All right, let's do the same over here. Again, we're going to integrate over a volume, which is defined as a sphere with radius 1.5, but in this case, the center is at 2, 2, 2, away from the origin. We have the d vector defined and the e vector defined. And notice the delta function, and I forgot my dv here. The delta function in three dimensions is the e vector minus the r vector. So what we should do is, again, find the e minus r vector, the magnitude of that. So e minus r, and let's go ahead and square that. So this is equal to e minus r. Now the r vector is centered at 2, 2, 2, 2, so that gives us... 3 minus 2 squared uh, plus 2 minus 2 squared plus uh, 1 minus 2 squared. So this is equal to 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared. That's equal to 2. Of course, that's squared. That's the magnitude squared. And we have a sphere radius 1.5, so we're going to take r squared equals 1.5 squared. So r squared equals 2.25. And since 2 is less than 2.25, we realize that the delta function is inside the volume. And so we're able now to go ahead and integrate this. Now, of course, what we're going to utilize here is we're going to say that this is equal to the function evaluated when r equals e. So when the r vector equals the e vector, so that this is equal to zero, then this integral becomes equal to um, r replaced by e. So we have the e vector dotted with the d vector minus the e vector. And that's what that is equal to. So now all we have to do is go ahead and evaluate that. So here we have the e vector. Uh, which is defined as 3 in the x direction plus 2 in the y direction plus 1 in the z direction and we're going to take the dot product with the difference of d and e. So 1 minus 3 is minus 2 in the x direction, 2 minus 2 is plus 0 in the y direction and 3 minus 1 is plus 2 in the z direction like this. 
I'm going to be careful here that we don't get confused. So put a line there. So simply the dot product of those two. And so that's equal to 3 times negative 2 plus 2 times 0 plus 1 times 2 which is minus 6 plus 0 plus 2 is equal to minus 4. So we end up with that integral being equal to minus 4. How did we do that? Well, first we had to make sure that the delta function was inside the volume of integration, which it was. Secondly, we set, oh, I forgot my e here, didn't I? We set the r vector equal to the e vector so that this becomes 0. And then we take the function and we replace every r by what r is equal to, in this case the e vector, so the r becomes the e vector, this r becomes the e vector, we have a dot product of e dotted with d minus e, and that becomes equal to minus 4, and that's how we apply the delta function to something like that, and that is how it's done. That's the last one of this set. <laughs> that's a big, a big set. The biggest set I think we've ever made, yeah.